Human behavior is lopsided, really lopsided. Your two hands are probably perfect mirror images of one another, and yet I bet you you only use one of them for practically anything that requires any skill. Now, I'm not up here to talk about handedness today, because that's actually the lateral bias you've already noticed. Instead, I'm going to focus on some of the lateral biases you might not have noticed. For example, when we pose for a portrait, we tend to turn the left cheek. When we kiss a romantic partner, both people tend to tilt to the right. When we cradle a baby, we tend to cradle off to the left. So why is our behavior so lopsided? Well, our behavior is lopsided because our brains are functionally lopsided. And I've been studying left brain, right brain differences in the lab for over 20 years. But you don't need a lab to detect these differences. They're plainly visible in our everyday behavior. So this event's taking place on, you know, on a university campus. And just about like any other campus, if you wander the halls, you'll find them decorated with pictures of the graduating classes. And not far from this red dot here, uh, you can find this picture of me on the wall. Now, <laughs> OK, it's not my favorite picture of myself. It's fine. <laughs> Some fashion crimes being committed here, indeed. But I'm doing one thing right, which is that I've turned my head to the right, and I've shown my left cheek to the camera. And you'll find that with most grad photos. Now, this left cheek posing bias isn't unique to grad photos. You can wander the portrait gallery of a famous museum, or you can scroll through your Instagram feed, and no matter where or when you look, about two-thirds of the portraits will feature that left cheek. So even when you do find an apparent right cheek example, like that Van Gogh on the right there, there's often something a little bit odd about it. So this Van Gogh, it's a self-portrait, and it quite prominently displays that bandage over his ear. But it wasn't Van Gogh's right ear that was severed. It was his left. So that's not his right cheek after all. Not only is that image a selfie, but it's a mirror selfie, circa 1888. <laughs> now, if you're surveying posing biases in portraits, uh, you'll also notice something missing. You won't find many centrally posed portraits. Take a look at my passport photo here. Also not my favorite picture of myself, but I'd hazard to guess that you don't like your passport photo either. We tend not to like centrally posed photos. Sure, they're the norm for passports and mugshots and driver's licenses and the like, but given the opportunity, most of us will turn the left cheek. Now, when this bias was first discovered in hand-painted portraits, some speculated that it was being driven by some sort of mechanical bias from right-handed artists. But left-handed artists also show the left cheek. And in fact, even when we started to produce portraiture using cameras, that left cheek bias persisted. So instead of being caused by a mechanical bias by right-handed artists, it looks like this posing bias is actually caused by biases in our brains. So the left side of the brain controls the right side of the body, and it tends to dominate language and the coordination of movement. The right hemisphere of the brain controls the left side of the body, and it tends to dominate both the perception and production of emotion. So the right hemisphere of the brain drives the left side of the face, which makes it more emotionally expressive. And when we're trying to appear more emotionally expressive in an image, we're more likely to turn that left cheek. And conversely, if people are trying to look unemotional in an image, the left cheek bias will actually go away. So if you look at, say, uh, the portrait gallery of the Royal Society, if you look at portraits of scientists, the bias goes away. If you look at high school yearbooks, and instead of looking at the students, you look at the teachers, the left cheek bias goes away. So next time you're choosing which selfie to post, or maybe you're selecting which image to set as your profile picture on LinkedIn or even an online dating site, my advice is to choose a left cheek portrait. Now, this left cheek posing bias isn't the only left-right difference that you'll find in your social media feed or in an art gallery. We also have a strong preference for leftward lighting. Take a look at these two spheres here. So one of them should look convex to you. It should look like it's sticking out whereas the other should look concave. But it's actually a false comparison. They're the exact same sphere, but I've rotated one of them 180 degrees. So that left one looks like it's sticking out because you assume the light's coming from the top, which is fair enough. That's where light usually comes from. So it's probably no surprise to you that in art, we usually portray light coming from above. But it might surprise you that in art, we usually portray light coming from the top left. So take another look at Vermeer's Girl with a Pearl Earring here. Sure, it's lit from the top, but it's lit from the top left. 
Now, this leftward lighting bias isn't unique to portraits. You'll also find it in landscapes, including landscape photography, like this lovely shot of Saskatoon here. And you can even find it in ads in magazines. So my lab surveyed thousands of pictures in magazines and found this dominance of leftward lighting in the ads. And it made us wonder, well, are left-lit ads any better than right-lit ads? So we made fake ads, fake ads for fake products. We showed the same product lit from the left and lit from the right. And then we asked people to rate the images and to rate the ads. And sure enough, the left-lit pictures were more aesthetically pleasing, and people were more interested in purchasing the products when they were lit from the left. Now, in addition to our preference for leftward lighting, those of us with English as a first language, so English reads from left to right, we also have a preference for leftward motion in images. So I want you to take a look at Twitter's Larry Bird logo here. And yes, his name really is Larry. Um, of all the things that I say today, I fear that might be the one thing you remember years from now. <laughs> but Larry is clearly depicted going from left to right. Now, I can't actually show you the reversed image. I'd love to show you Larry going the other way and tell you that you don't like him as much. But Twitter forbids me from showing an altered version of their image. So I can't actually show you that. Uh, when we ran the actual study, though, we didn't use Larry. We used other images with inferred motion from left to right and right to left. And sure enough, those of us with English as a first language preferred images with motion that goes from left to right. Which brings me to a very special case of directional movement, kissing. So when kissing a romantic partner, both people tend to tilt to the right. And you can find this kissing effect in just about any famous image of a famous kiss. Uh, this is the Times Square V-Day kiss, for example. Uh, you can find this in the first interracial kiss on television. Uh, you can find it in kisses with real princesses or even Disney animated ones on film. And the first study to report this bias wasn't actually done on images. It was done by observing real people engaging in real PDA in uh, international airports, uh, train stations, beaches, public parks across three countries. So in the US, in Germany, and Turkey. And no matter where or the researchers looked, they found this rightward kissing bias. Now, since that research study, many research groups, including my own, have replicated this rightward kissing bias. It doesn't matter whether the smooches are right or left-handed, either. However, the kisses have to be romantic to show this rightward bias. So in my lab, we compared parents kissing one another to parents kissing their kids. So when the parents are kissing one another, they tend to kiss right. But when kissing their children, the bias went away. Now, we also examined kisses between strangers, which I know sounds really strange, but, but let me explain. So in 2014, the New York-based clothing company, Wren, uh, produced a film, put it on YouTube, called First Kiss. And in that film, they paired 20 unacquainted individuals with one another, and they had them kiss on camera. And that film went viral, and honestly, I'm not sure why. Personally, I find it really hard to watch. These pairings are really awkward between the random strangers. But as so often happens with these viral videos, others started to create their own montages similar to the one that went viral, and soon there were hundreds of these videos of random strangers kissing on YouTube. So we have hundreds of people in the room today. <laughs> you might be sitting next to a loved one, but you might also be sitting next to a stranger. So imagine kissing that stranger while another stranger films that encounter for YouTube. Awkward. <laughs> so, what happened with these awkward pairings? Well, we looked for this rightward kissing effect, and we coded the first kiss encounters of 226, let's say, pairings. Can't really call them couples. These people don't even know one another. But we looked for that rightward bias, and it was gone. Almost a perfect one-to-one -one ratio between rightward and leftward kissers between strangers. So you get a rightward bias when people actually love or at least know one another, but it goes away when you're kissing kids, and it goes away when you're kissing a stranger. So, why do we kiss to the right? Well, it's probably related to that right hemisphere dominance for emotional expression again, just like that posing bias I described earlier. Because, of course, when you kiss to the right, you're presenting your left cheek, the more emotional cheek, to the person that you're kissing. Which leads me uh, to one last lopsided behavior that I want to talk about, and it's actually related to romantic kisses. It's cradling a baby. So I want you to take a moment and imagine cradling a baby. And if you have trouble imagining one, I've provided a stunt baby for you. Let's call him Larry. <laughs> and I want you to imagine holding Larry. So which way are you holding him? Is Larry's head on your right side, or is it on your left? 
you know, getting reactions for left, which is typical. So despite most of us being right-handed, most of us cradle babies off to the left. And it's an effect that you'll find in experienced mothers, but you'll also find it in new mothers holding their newborn for the very first time. And in fact, you'll even find this leftward cradling bias in 15-year-old boys who've never held a baby in their life. And it's nothing new. So if we look at early artifacts, like this pre-Columbian era sculpture of mother and child, and you survey many of these artifacts, they show the same leftward cradling bias that we do today. And you don't even need a real baby. We cradle our fur babies off to the left as well, just as if they, was a, they were a real baby. So why? Why do we cradle off to the left? Well, it could be one of our more pronounced anatomical asymmetries that's to blame. So the heart is not in the middle of the chest, it's off to the left. And when you cradle to the left, that puts the baby's head closest to the heart. And there's even some evidence, it's admittedly not great evidence, but there's some evidence that babies are soothed by the sound of a heartbeat. But I'm a neuroscientist. I'd much rather blame the brain than the heart. So this leftward carrying arrangement places the child in the parent's left visual field, which is perceived by the right hemisphere, better allowing the parent to monitor the emotional state of the child and it preferentially exposes the child to the parent's left side of face, which, as we've already dis discussed, is the more emotionally expressive side. So that's a really quick tour through five of our uh, behavioral biases. So we talked about posing, lighting, directional motion, kissing, and cradling. But there are many others. The left-right differences in our brain influence which way we turn when we enter a room. They influence how we select a seat in a movie theater or on an airplane or in a classroom. Uh, they even influence how we gesture with our hands during a conversation, even a one-way conversation like this one. So why do these lateral biases matter? What can you do with this information? Well, we live in an image-obsessed world. So back when Van Gogh was creating his mirror selfies, they took a long time, and the images had pretty limited reach. But today, we are producing and distributing images at an unprecedented rate. So the two big takeaways from my talk, and the, the name of the Twitter bird isn't one of them. <laughs> so the first is that we have strong and consistent lateral biases in our everyday behavior that reveal the left-right differences in our brain. You don't need a brain scanner or a psych lab to detect these things. They're plainly visible in our everyday life. And second, once you know about these biases, you can actually use them to your advantage. So you now know that we prefer leftward poses. You now know that we prefer leftward lighting. You now know that English speakers prefer left to right motion in images, and you can exploit all of those preferences when creating or editing your own images. And it doesn't matter whether you're simply choosing a selfie to upload on social media, or maybe even if you're designing an international advertising campaign. Thank you for your attention today. I really appreciate it. Thank you.